Welcome to Lunchtime with the Masters, brought to you by PICA. I'm Brett Robotsky, and we have the honor today of having Lawrence Kobach with us today. Larry is a podiatrist and an attorney. He practiced for 20 plus years in New York, was involved in politics in New York State, yes. and then went on to law school. So I thought it'd be fascinating to get his take on where healthcare is as somebody who knows both sides of it. Larry, welcome to Lunchtime with the Masters. It's a pleasure to see you again, Britt, and thank you for having me. Wonderful. We talked a little bit before that when it comes to malpractice, yes. you said it's the chart. It's not only in malpractice, it's in insurance audits, it's in professional licensure defense. The chart is always exhibit A, and it could work for our, our brother podiatrist or sister podiatrist, and it could work against us. Is the EHR aspect of the chart a good thing or a bad thing? It's both. If the podiatric physician allows the electronic medical records to make uh, him lazy, it's a bad thing. Copy and paste is a bad thing. Using the charts to help someone's handwriting to have a more complete and more accurate chart for each visit is a very good thing. So you have to make it work for you. You have to work at it. So the chart is, is there's no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. The key to charting is in your chart. It should state why you did, what you did when you did it, and why you didn't do what you didn't do when you didn't do it. Great line. Write also what you didn't do and why. For example, someone's allergic to a cephalosporin. That was the most sensitive antibiotic on your culture and sensitivity. You didn't give a cephalosporin. You gave a, uh, let's say, Leviquin or something of that nature, quinolone. The reason you should write in your chart why you gave the drug that was second best. You give the reason, that level of charting will scare most attorneys away. State licensing boards will be impressed by that level of charting. Insurance companies, when they're going over your records, will be impressed by that level of charting. And they'll go to someone with worse charts, and believe me, they'll find them. So at the end of the day, charting is about showing how smart you are. And what you did. And what you did. If it's not there, you didn't do it. There's some other things. You've been involved with state organizations and as far as defense on the organizational side of organized medicine, both in New York and New Jersey. Yes. What's, what's the biggest pain in the neck for those people today? Well, right now the macro situation is keeping them up at night because the smaller practitioner, the solo, uh, the two, the three, the four physicians, podiatric physicians, medical doctors, uh, they're going to be extinct most likely on the macro because they will not have the personnel that will be able to generate the, um, the statistics that will be necessary that the government will require for the physician to be reimbursed. Do you think if this macro actually goes through eventually, it's the end of small private practice doctors? I think it's very possible, if not probable. That's my opinion. There are others that differ. Uh, there are people in Congress that claim to be very cognizant of that fact. Several uh, congressmen and senators from more rural states that are very worried about that it will hurt their uh, practitioners in more rural settings. Wow. I believe that pro is the opposite of con, so progress is the opposite of Congress. So we shouldn't forget that. I think we have a similar attitude when it comes to politicians. Without question. I think people got a lot of comments with this one. Please go to the forum. Go to forum.podiatricsuccess.com. Thank you, Larry, for being with us. It was my pleasure, Brett.